And I'm at the final stages of uh, on this painting just now. And it's one of the most difficult times uh, when you're on a picture like this because uh, you're near the finish and uh, you wonder when you're finished, surprisingly enough. So uh, what I'm doing here is just uh, touching around this area here. Um, I'm feeling that this uh, St Stephen's Church, you can see it, if I can bring it a bit nearer to you. Uh, okay, big easel. Not enough space. There we go. Yeah, um, I'm working on this here. This is an amazing building. This is uh, by uh, William Henry Playfair and it's in a classical style. It's an octagonal church, would you believe? And uh, I'm working on the shadow within this enormous entrance here. Uh, I was feeling that it was getting a bit too dark and a bit too warm. Generally, when you're doing a picture, you want to have the warmer tones and the, you know, sort of more uh, heavy contrast towards the, the front of the picture and the foreground. And as you go further back, uh, the changes in colour and tone get a bit less. And that's what I'd originally thought about this here, to make it quite dark. But I'm finding that it's just a bit too dark, okay? So I'm trying to cool it down a bit with uh, some of the sort of blue... Uh, and violet mixed in here to lighten it up a bit and uh, take away some of that kind of darker uh, brownish tint that I had uh, t before. I'm quite happy the way it's going. Um, I You can see the difference in the way I've done the sky here because it's quite broad and uh, I got back and stood up and approached it from a distance so that I could uh, let fly with the texture and with the uh, longer paintbrushes to get a broader approach here with the clouds. So I've got a kind of semi-abstract and then I've got the more figurative treatment, the more architectural treatment uh, and, and more delicate, and more detail uh, down here. Uh, I moved away from the original photograph uh, quite early on to uh, work from the pastel and work out of my head uh, to stimulate the creativity more. Uh, I can't get outside to work uh, because of uh, lockdown. Uh, you can sit now and uh, look at things and stuff like that, but you've got to be aware of the physical distancing. So sitting on a camp stool in front of a subject uh, might not be the most relaxing thing to do. So it's good just to take the information away from there and uh, work it up in the studio. I, I paint in quite an expressive way anyway, so it's uh, not entirely difficult for me to do that. So we've got the St Vincent's Church here and down the bottom here is this sort of street furniture, I like to call it here. I'll see if I can bring you a bit nearer, so you can have a wee bit look at that in more detail. Uh, it's a sort of drain cover. Now this is the sort of thing that a lot of people would want to leave out of a picture. And the broken uh, cobbles and holes in the road, which are cursed by many of the locals and cyclists in particular, I find is uh, quite good. I, I like that. Uh, it gives me a chance to break up the colour and get lost in the pattern effect uh, with these cobbles. Now, the windows too uh, interest me quite a lot, these here, and I have the chance of including the word Vincent, uh, which is a, ref <laughs> it's a reference to the pub, um, which is the St Vincent pub, which is just on the corner here, because this is St Vincent's uh, chapel and of course I'm thinking about Van Gogh and I thought hey yeah I'm going to make a bit of a feature of this but uh, I'm going to have to sign it and own up to it being me that uh, has done this picture down in the, the paving down in the corner and sometimes signing the picture can be quite difficult because you can get quite uh, hung up and making sure it doesn't really spoil or interfere uh, with the, the subject too much. Now here is my hallmark again the tree or trees here in the natural form, kind of contrasting with the architecture, uh, with the more geometrical shapes here. And again, a bit of street furniture, the no entry sign, where I can bring in a colour note, uh, quite uh, nice uh, 
colour note in here. And the tree, why, why I love trees so much is I can get into these negative, positive and negative shapes when I'm doing the sky in between. So it's not like a case of just uh, putting in the sky because it's behind, then putting the tree on top of that because it's in the foreground. I kind of play about with it in an abstract way where I'll sometimes make the sky uh, thicker in texture than the actual branches of the tree, which can be thinner. And it appears sometimes as if the sky is in front of the trees, or I can reverse it. So I love doing that because I can play with all the different little abstract shapes in amongst the, the branches of the tree there, as you can see. Now, colour scheme is typically me. It's, it's very colourful and that is just my sort of personal expression. I don't know where it comes from a lot of the time. Uh, I was trained to be able to do a lot of good observational drawing when I was at art college, drawing the figure and uh, study perspective to make buildings look solid and as if they're going back into the distance. So I've got all the technical training, but I move away a bit from that to kind of distort, uh, not too much, but you can see some distortions in the buildings in almost... Uh, this building here, which is beginning to sort of curve out, gently curve out a bit. And uh, I can sort of play about with that because I think you don't want something exact. I mean, why would you want to exactly like a photograph? Because you could take a photograph and there you go. That is, uh, it's, but a, a camera lens isn't really always the way that we really see things. Sometimes we think we see things like that. But um, when we're looking at things, we focus in isolated areas, our eyes move around. And I think sometimes a painting can um, connect with that, the way we actually see, the way we feel. And that's, I, I love people like um, Cezanne and Van Gogh and these great expressive uh, impressionist painters because of the way they put the colour on. You can connect with the physical application of the paint. If you see here, I've got it quite thick and you can actually connect with the motion of the artist in the laying on of the paint. And get up here, this amazing architecture of the Playfair Church kept me going quite a lot. Uh, I'm still going to work on this a bit more, but I don't want to overwork it. I can, it gives me an excuse for a lot of good sort of pattern to come through. If you see in like this uh, curvature of the window and the kind of balustrades where I can play about with different shapes and textures of paint. And it's just a great, a great vehicle, this architecture, uh, to do that with. Now, <laughs> This, this church has been criticised some of the time for being uh, just uh, too huge. Some of the decorative features are massive. And I'm working on this just now because this elegant uh, classical Roman Greek feature, it, it just stands out a bit too much for me at the moment. So I wanted to sort of blend this back a bit. And uh, I'm going to probably make it more like the colour here so it's going to blend a bit more into that wall here. Um, it's, quite, it's quite an unusual church for Edinburgh, actually. So this is the way I'm progressing at the moment. There's not much more that I'm going to, much more time I'm going to be spending on this. Uh, and as I'm saying, the most difficult time for an artist is sometimes to know when to stop. Uh, sometimes something in your mind just says, that's it. And I'm reaching that stage now, but I must say I'm quite pleased with it the way it's actually gone. And uh, this is uh, just leading up to my final video because I've been uh, putting together these instructional videos for people if they wish to dabble, if they wish to go and during lockdown and maybe t pick up a paintbrush, some paint and do a bit of landscape painting. It's a most relaxing activity uh, apart from anything else. The process I think sometimes is more important than the actual finished result. Um, so I'll continue just now to, to work to calm down the colour in this huge entrance here. 
you know, just uh, kind of getting rid of some of the, the darker area, but not to make it too light because to make something look as if it's coming towards you, it has to be a bit more in contrast within itself, if you know what I mean. The darks and the lights are a bit more um, severe than if you're going further back, as I said earlier, where it's going to be lighter. So just before I finish, I'll take you on a little tour of the picture. I'll start off there in the sky. You see, I use oil paint on canvas, uh, contrast with the church. There's some kind of complementary colours in there with yellows and oranges and against violets in the sky, which make it even more dramatic. Down into St. Vincent's uh, Chapel here. It's an amazing, it's an Episcopalian church. It's uh, one of the hidden gems of, of Edinburgh, this building here, most elegant. And uh, you can even wander down this little street here which sometimes I take, when I take people on tour, I go down there, wandering around. Even these um, bollards uh, sticking up out of the pavement interests me too. And the elegant uh, lamps on the buildings there. So typically Edinburgh, this, uh, the stonework, the pattern, the yellow, the double yellow lines, believe it or not. Uh, the no parking lines interest me because I can uh, use that in the t t overall effect here. Okay, so next stage is doing a few bit more detail, a few bits more of the detail and then get the signature on and put this aside and start on the next one. But I'm going to have one more video uh, to show the final result, which won't be a live video, but thanks very much for... Um, coming along today and uh, if you've got any comments uh, please feel free to leave them and I'll get back to you on that. Uh, all the best and stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.